Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. It's June 4th already, and I'm Derek Shore. I'm Courtney Savala. Welcome to the show. Kind of a fun day today. You know what? I got up today at 4.30 this wow. morning. Wow. Why would you do that? Well, this afternoon is crazy, and it was the only time I could get a workout in. And I don't ever work out that early. It was a 5 a.m. class. So are you wide awake now, or are you dragging a little bit? I'm a little bit sleepy. Really? See, when we work out in the morning, from, it like sets the tone for me, and I, it wakes me up. It, it did for like the first couple hours. I gotta be honest, I'm like, <laughs> I'm hitting that, that lag. Do you need to go, you, you know, take a little nap? No, I'm good. I'm I good. think you should go off and take a little vacation, a micro vacation maybe. What is that? Have you heard of these? So micro vacations, well, for millennials, I technically count as barely. a I barely <laughs> made it in under that line. I'm not sure if that's something I, I said, do you want really to claim? brag about that. Okay. Millennials don't have the best reputation, right, for a number of reasons. No offense to my fellow millennials <laughs> and the others in the room. Sorry, it's it's a thing. But microcations are sort of a new trend in travel for millennials. And what it is is a shorter vacation, maybe a, an extended weekend. I mean, it's why are we renaming it? Because it just sounds like a long weekend. That's why, not a new thing. Why are you so angry? No, but I'm saying... Is that it's, early morning workout? <laughs> it's not a new thing, though, right? No, because more and more people are doing it. It may not be a new thing, but studies show that millennials, more and more of them, are taking shorter vacations. Because it used to be, oh, what's the annual vacation you're taking with your family? And then you would take a week off or however long you yeah. could. And you would take, like, one mothership vacation. For the for the year, I'm I'm all, well, yeah. Okay, so you're you're only doing one trip a year then. We like to take the microcation because we are millennials. <laughs> barely, barely. Brandon's not barely a millennial. He's you, like, honey. <laughs> wow, you I'm did just get kidding. up at 4:30 no, on the wrong side of the bed. But I I get I get both sides. I get the you know multiple short trips. I get that. But then I also look forward to the longer trip. You know, my kids are younger, so I want a longer trip. Again, only 18 summers left with these kids. I know, I know. And when you put it that way, it is so depressing. People cite the cost of travel and also difficulty taking time off work as okay. a reason why they take more vacations away. But sadly, when they were chatting with baby boomers, well, a lot of baby boomer boomers do like to do the microcation, weekend, extended, whatever. But a lot of baby boomers they surveyed weren't taking vacations at all throughout the year, which is problematic because... Yeah, you never get to hit the reset button. Yeah, you burn out. I'm a fan of taking little vacations, I think, because it helps my brain reset. This, this job is exhausting. It's exhausting. So it, it, when we can just get away for the weekend, it helps me sort of rest and recharge. Plus, it's all about seeing family and friends who are both here in Houston, but also scattered around. That's the challenge for Orlando and I, because, it, you know, we have no family here. So that we're constantly battling. You guys are, yes. We're your family. I know, but not parents. Yeah. Parents, right? So it's, it's hard. You have to go see the, you know, both my parents live in the same state, so that's good. But like, you know, my brothers are in two different states and their kids, so it's it's difficult. It's multiple yeah. trips, and then you have to plan them outside of school because the more school they miss, it's a lot. The other thing is, I noticed today um, one of one of the stories on Facebook was this um, fare slashing on United Airlines. Uh, I'm sorry, on Southwest Airlines that started today will last through Thursday. I can never find the deal though. They uh, advertise the deal. Uh, is that what you're going to say? That's what I was going to say. I know. If they said $70. Let me tell you something. I threw in about 45 different dates, and I couldn't find one flight under 185 Wow. And various cities. Especially um, Houston to Chicago is a very popular flight. There's multiple. Not yeah. one $70 flight on that Southwest. And you can go from August until December 31st. Didn't find one. I think you should write an angry letter. I was going to go to Salt Lake to try to visit my mom this weekend. Forget it. One round trip ticket. Yeah. 1200 bucks. I know. $1,200. What dollars. is happening? No wonder. Europe for that. But here's the other thing. With the airline tickets, as, as high as they are, who can, where, where are these micro vacations coming from? I mean, are they going You're to in like... In your backyard. You know what I mean? Are they, is it like La Berge in Louisiana? Like, where are they going? I have to say, 
I have never been a huge road trip person, but living in Texas, living in Houston is so awesome because you can go to New Orleans, go you can anywhere. go to Austin, San Antonio, and we have access to all of these great little destinations at our fingertips. Yeah. It's just a short drive, so I'm a fan of doing the long staycation weekend, either close to home or a couple hours drive away. Yeah, I, don't, I love going to Louisiana. It's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Brandon's hometown, Homa. You want another airplane story? I love story? Homa. Best bread in town. The, the, the bread, like the... I thought for you the didn't eat bread. When you're in Homa, you do. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that bread there is real good. I for need the to go. Boys. And Jan Hargrave from Lafayette. You know yeah. our body language friend, Jan? Oh, yeah. she is Cajun through my way and through. right through there. Oh, I would so love that. Good. So, you know I have this thing about airplanes, right? And lately, I've become kind of a nervous flyer. I don't know. It's this new thing. <laughs> Just what? anxiety. I don't know. I'm not a fan of turbulence. And anyway, if I if I hit really bad turbulence on one flight, it sort of stays with me for six months or a year, and then I really am kind of a nervous fire. It's not good. No. Brandon usually tries to calm me down, but it doesn't work. But you know how I feel about being trapped in a small area with like a loud talker or with problematic folks. People taking their socks and shoes off. Well, yeah, because again, yeah, we're all collectively here together, but I really didn't ask to sit next to you. So keep your smells and your sounds Wouldn't it be great if you could pick your, your partner, like who you sit next to on the plane, like they have a little bio, likes to cut toenails on an airplane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could bypass all these people. Oh, like if God, people were right. able to put comments about who they are, like you rate your almost passenger. like an Uber. <laughs> That's a great idea. Rate your seatmate. Yes. And then avoid them. Well, so about a week and a half ago, I was on this flight coming back and there was the sound as the plane started. And you know, they always make the announcement that says, if you have an iPad or a phone, you must be, or a laptop, you must be watching your movie with headphones. You know how many yeah. people still do not use headphones? I or know. like the kid will be playing the uh, casino game and it's like ding, 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 full blast. Yeah. We're three hours on a plane. Wait. Not okay, people, not okay. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, sorry, I keep throwing well, things. You're Very worked out. You're getting spicy. <laughs> Did you wake up at 4.30? 4.37. Okay. So there across the aisle, comes this sound, and Brandon and I are the same way. We have to watch each other, we have to calm each other down. So Brandon, you know, his, his dog ears perk up. He's like, what is that sound? I know. And across the aisle, there is this woman watching on her iPad, Crazy Rich Asians. It's a great movie, but it I've is. already seen it. Don't need to see it again for a minute, unless I'm on my own terms, right? Blasting Crazy Rich Asians. The, it starts, and the opening credits start, but then I look over, I realize she's wearing headphones. So she's wearing headphones, yet oh, the no. iPad is blasting, full blast. So we're both kind of looking around, and I'm waiting for someone. She's outside arm's reach, so I can't give her a gentle tap. So the woman next to her leans over at me and is like, I don't, I don't know I don't what know. to do. Should, should I say something? Yes, please say something. So she tapped the woman and said, it's just really loud. Her headphones weren't. Plugged, plugged in. in. <laughs> and this poor woman said, she was very sweet and she apologized and she said, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I wondered why it was turned all the way up. And, and I, I can't hear, hear a thing. <laughs> Bless her heart. Was it my mom? Was that who it was? Actually, she did. Was seem that her? Oh, Eileen, <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. I'm not kidding you. That's an Eileen story right there. Eileen must have had her hair dyed dark brown. <laughs> Salt and pepper, dark brown. <laughs> Man. Bless her heart. Yeah. But at least that issue was solved and the rest of the flight was silent until we hit That's turbulent. Funny. And then I was screaming. <laughs> anyway, I am so excited about today's show because we have some legends mm. in the house, including a guy we recently had on our show, yeah. country music legend Gary P. Nunn. He is back in the house. Last time he was here, we had a great chat with him. He performed today. He will help us understand why he has decided to be part of this brand new statewide campaign to help prevent auto thefts. It is a huge issue here in Texas. It sure is, and we love Gary P. Nunn. Can't wait to chat we with do. him. Also, y'all, the science behind wines we like, we have a master of wine, Tim Han, uh, Hanny, and uh, he's going to figure out how to match the wine to the dinner or to the diner, yeah, not the dinner. Apparently Bas it's all science. Yeah, it's all about looking in our mouth at our taste buds. So I guess I'm gonna be put to the test there. Your taste buds under a magnifying I, glass. Yeah. Oh, 
that sounds sexy. See what happens. Can't wait. I brush my teeth. <laughs> Today is National Cheese Day, by the way, and Houston Live correspondent Lauren Kelly is out in the Heights celebrating at Houston Dairy Maids, one of my favorite places. Oh, yeah. I love it. Hey, Lauren. This place is so cool. You walk in, you get the great smell of cheese. Schechter, she's the owner. Thank you so much for helping us celebrate National Cheese Day. Let's talk a little bit about how the Houston Dairy Maids came about. So we started about 12 years ago. We're a retail shop in the Heights. We're also a wholesaler. And we have a mission of promoting people that um, make cheese by hand on small farms, particularly here in Texas. But okay. we do have cheeses from other states and other countries as well. All right, well. and you guys say you supply to like 300 restaurants in the city? That's correct. So all the delicious restaurants that you're eating at is probably your cheese. Absolutely. <laughs> we hope well, so. a trick to entertaining guests, happy hour wise, and, and uh, appetizers is a great cheese platter. What goes into a great cheese platter? Variety. So you want a mix of milk types, goat, sheep, and cow, if you Ooh, can find goat. it. Yeah. Um, some soft cheeses that, or mild and mild cheeses and some harder, stronger cheeses. Okay. You've got a couple of cheeses right here. We're going to taste a few, and these are all Texas cheeses. Correct. And anytime you come into the shop as a retail customer, we're going to offer you a free tasting. Okay. Awesome. And so this is an abbreviated version of okay. what we do. <laughs> and starting with one of our best-selling cheeses, this is June's Joy, which is a fresh goat cheese from Pure Luck Dairy. Goat cheese is my favorite. In Dripping Springs. It's mm. blended oh with a God. little bit of honey, black pepper, and thyme. That melts in the roof of your mouth. Isn't that it is great? Delish. That is delicious. Okay. What else do we have? Another really popular popular one is the redneck cheddar. So redneck, this, huh? Yes. Okay. So this is from the Veldheisen family farm there in mm -hmm. Dublin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they pour spindle tap beer over the curds before they form the wheels. So you oh, might you're not going to get a buzz cheese. from that though, right? No. Okay. <laughs> We've got one more to try and it comes in the form of a 90 pound wheel. This is Tim and you are the cheesemonger here. Right. Tell us a little bit about what's in this wheel. Well, this is Parmigiano Reggiano. It's from Italy. It's probably one of their most famous cheeses. And uh, I've already prepped it, so I'm going to crack it for you real quick. We'll crack it on open. Let's <laughs> and, go. There's uh, knives here. It's like a, yeah, ninja, a cheese ninja. I've already scored it and kind of popped it a few times. <laughs> okay. so, uh, Let's see that. Look how beautiful <laughs> that is. Go. That is so heavy. Can I can I try some of this? Uh, sure. <laughs> okay, let's see. Mmm, it's exactly what you have on pizza and pasta, just in a brick form. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we got lots more to come from the Houston Dairy Maid. You guys, stay tuned. All of oh this. my gosh, that is one <laughs> giant huge. of cheese. Save us some, please, Lauren. We will be checking back with it's you huge. a little later it's on huge. in today's show. Well, next on Houston Life, Daddy and Me Fashion. We have affordable looks to keep the entire family on trend. I love this Daddy and Me segment. It's about time. Yes. Stick around. We'll be right back. Day is right around the corner. Of course, June 16th, there is nothing cuter than matching dad with their little ones. Here to help us look our best fashion blogger, Don Darnell. Welcome back to the show, and thank you for doing this segment because we need more men's fashion on this show. Yes, I say that moms can't have all the fun, so this is going to be just a fun way for dads to get involved and just have some cute little matching um, outfits for Father's and Day. And these are not expensive looks, by the way. The no. most expensive is $80, right? Yes. <laughs> all right, well, let's uh, take a look at that first look. Kevin and Aubrey, and they are in their Sunday best. Dress yes. down just a little bit. And I just love this look because right now, now, um, Kevin's got like this cute, uh, cool kind of like his blazer look with um, this shirt from Old Navy for $30. And then he's got, he dressed it down with a pair of jeans. So this is like going to church or even headed to brunch with his cute little girl here, Aubrey. And I just think she's just so adorable. She is. With the cutest little dress. And then she's got the coordinating um, denim jacket. And then her shoes are from DSW, and they're just so adorable. And that dress is only ten bucks. Yes, from Old Navy. ten bucks. Yes, I love awesome. it. Yes. Thinking sort of with that red, white, and blue theme too. Yes, very cute, very patriotic, and you both look fantastic. So cute. Well done, <laughs> Kevin and Aubrey. Okay, let's look at Ahmad and Ashton. This is casual street style. Yeah, I love these two. This is a great look. Yes. Yeah, so this is like that summer Hawaiian. I mean, he makes dads look cool in a Hawaiian shirt, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> So we've got a mod here, and this is shirts from H H M, and it's actually only thirty bucks too. So this is cute with like the the denim look. So this is a really cool trendy look for dads, 
And then we've got Ahmad here who is just matching in his um, Hawaiian shirt too. And this whole outfit is from Zara's. And that's also thirty dollars too. And then they've I got. I love that because his whole outfit is fifty bucks. From yes, Zara. yes, it's just a great um, style, and then just so affordable too. And then they've got their matching bands on from DSW, and that is just so adorable. <laughs> and you guys look great. Right? <laughs> Hawaiian shirts too. I like that they're fitted because oftentimes we see dads wearing yes. like triple XL Hawaiian yes. shirts, and they don't. Yeah, they don't need it. Yes, and bodies. this is a cool way to wear Hawaiian yeah. shirts, right? You guys look great. Right. Don't be afraid of that denim. <laughs> On denim. Thanks, guys. All right, up next we have Gustavo and Lucia. Okay. And this is a sort of athleisure, more casual yes, look. Yes, and this is probably one of my favorites because I feel like th this dad shouldn't be wear, uh, afraid to wear pink. And this is like that cute uh, mommy, uh, dad, and matching uh, daughter look with, uh, you know, like going to a soccer game or even to dance practice. She is there rocking it. This She's whole ready. look from Zara's. I mean, look at that. Like, how adorable is this? outfit. This and is so look at cute. her Fila sneakers yes. from CSW. Those are so on trend. <laughs> the whole family can have them. Yes, that's true. And they're just so adorable. And I just think this is just so cute for um, the dads to, to match with their daughter. It looks awesome. Where did you say that pink sweatshirt is from? Zara's. From Zara. Mm -hmm. Okay. And 40 bucks. Not bad. Yes. Oh, you guys look great in pink. <laughs> Okay, so much. let's move on. Yeah, let's All go. Right. We have Josh and Jaden, who's actually your husband and, and son. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and I just like, okay, so we're doing the uh, dad t-shirts, and so I love the his shirt right here. It says, ain't no hood like fatherhood. Oh, yes. Aww. Yes, and so they're ready for the beach, of course, you know, for a private July. <laughs> and we've got my son in this rad like dad shirt, and that is from, <laughs> from Old Navy. And um, he's got that's only 10 bucks his shirt right there and those trunks are all under like 30 bucks from Old Navy as well and then the Adidas the they are just the slides these are so cool for uh, for the whole family I have matching ones too and yeah. they're perfect for the beach my boys <laughs> love them as well but I love this too we always go to Old Navy for all the fun t-shirts these are great all right, and let's get all the yes. dads and kids back out to take one final look. You guys look great, and uh, you know, the red, white, and blue never never gets old. Yes, so. yes, and perfect for Father's Day and for Fourth of July, which is coming up, so. All right, Don Darnell, great to see you, Thank and thanks you again so to much. all of our models. Happy <laughs> summer, happy early Father's Day as well, and if you would like to connect with Don, you can just visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, and look for the section called Scene on Houston Life. Okay, Stealing the show, I love it. <laughs> Next on Houston Life, a master of wine is debunking myths. And wait until you hear what he thinks about pairing wine and food. We'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah, this started a long time ago. You get two experts together, they're tasting the same wine, arguing, oh, is it this or that? Right. And it's like they're not even having the same thing. So I started dedicating my career almost 30 years ago to trying to figure out how to personalize wine, how to really, really eliminate all of the BS and the stuff that we've built up around it, intimidation. So we yeah. could be drinking the same wine, but Courtney and I could be tasting different things totally. based on our taste buds? Some people are colorblind, they just don't have certain receptors. Some people have way more receptors. So this rig is set up, this was kind of one of our seminal uh, things that we started learning about. And what this does, normally we paint your tongue blue okay, because your, tongue your, your taste buds actually won't get stained. And so what we do, come and stick your tongue out. Come on, you can look. Oh dear. Yeah, and, and what this does, <laughs> oh, we, wow. we've done this with hundreds of experts and consumers, and, and this is well known in sensory sciences. And so what we can do is some people have 500 taste buds, other people have 11,000. It's huge. So, so what you do is you take a close-up picture of their taste buds. By the way, Courtney, you We're have good. never looked better. I, I know, that's, that's a fine tongue. <laughs> it's hard, I'll, I'll post it on social what you look like through that. <laughs> 
that. But so, okay, once you've done this then, and you can come back over yeah, here, yeah. Tim, what are, you, what are you doing then with this information? Let's say someone has a ton of taste buds on their tongue. What does that mean in terms of how they taste wine? Well, we've got to, actually, we do it now with just simple questions. We've learned to make correlations and other behaviors, because at the end of the day, we want this really simple. So I was with Cassandra in makeup. I asked her simple questions. She's got 11,000 taste buds way off the chart. The only thing she's ever gonna like is sweet wines. So what we've learned is sweet wine lovers, actually the alcohol burns so much that bitterness is unbearable. They can't drink certain coffees and they're usually tear tea drinkers. Okay. And if you love, love salt, that's the number one sign you have the most taste buds. Oh. And if you're a sweet wine drinker, so we've got this idea, oh, your taste buds, monsieur, everybody should drink wine. No, red wine. It, we're, we're out of our minds. French loves sweet wines. You could even put fruit syrup into your wine if you like, in France, in Italy. And we're just not doing it anymore. So fruit what we're- Fruit syrup? Uh, yeah. People add that to their wine? It's called a cure. And it was done with cassis syrup or liqueur, and it saved the French wine industry. It was their version of white Zinfandel. And so we, we've really made a mess of wine education and what we're doing with consumers right. so that now we can say, hey, how much do you love salt? You know, I always say I'm a salt over a sweet. Got it. So, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't say I love it or salt everything, but I'm definitely attracted to the salty food. Great. And uh, uh, what do you think of artificial sweeteners in no. like diet? Okay, metallic and Don't unpleasant. Like it. Got yeah. it. So those are specialized receptors. Not everybody gets that. Do you have to cut tags out of your clothes? Uh, most of the time. Yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah. So you've got a tactile sensitivity. So basically what, what these things point to are certain behaviors and traits of your preferences so that we can say, you, your wine preferences will go in a certain direction. And what kind of wines do you love? I, full body, I'm definitely not a sweet wine person, but uh, I love champagne. Um, I'm, I'm definitely, Cabernet I love, um, not really a Chardonnay fan. Take a sip of the wine. Okay. Oh, I thought you'd never invite I us. Know I know it. I know. Crying out loud, what kind of expert am I? <laughs> and what we're going to do is show you what, what you need to understand about wine and food mm. now. Man, that's good. And, and at, the, at the Woodlands Wine and Food Week this week, uh, Thursday nights, the, the big thing I'm here, this uh, this is my 15th anniversary of being the wine wizard. I love it. And 800 wines, 60 chefs. All right, so something sweet, right? Mm -hmm. Now try your wine. Okay. And this, night, by this, the way, is the, the guy's night at the wine festival, right? Yeah, tonight's, yeah, in my buddy Guy Stout. I love Guy Stout, I love you. Hmm. Oh, it does taste a little different. Is it getting a little bitter and unpleasant? Yeah. 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 The, the same thing happens when you brush your teeth and drink orange juice. Oh, that's nasty. And it doesn't matter if you're having a steak or fish or whatever. The food's sweet. This is going to happen. There's a simple, simple, so this is so crazy. All right. A little bit of salt and lemon. You've done this before? Uh -huh. All right. Now, just a little, you're not biting it. Literally, just a little lick. A little taste it. of lemon wedge uh, with uh, salt. Just a little, yep, yeah, just a lick. Just Don't bite it. Yeah, just a little lick. Okay. All right, and try your wine again and see what happens. That was disgusting. And this is why in Italy every dish is served with lemon and so. Now what's interesting it, is you you expected a bad taste, but it's really smooth. It pulls isn't it. It, it yeah. pulls out yeah. the dryness. And and so the. Mm. What, what's going on with wine and food? Drink the wines you love. Our right. credo is pair the wine to the diner, not the dinner. If you hate Chardonnay, you're going to hate it with fish. You're yeah, gonna you're hate not going to like this. it. Yeah. So you think all of that is baloney when someone oh, says, it's... oh, you must have white wine. So I'm salmon. the first American in history to become what's called a master of wines, highest credential in the world. Exams going on right now all around the world. I'm a chef by training. I am just fascinated by these sciences and whatever. In the last 30 years, I've been studying this so that we could say, hey, let's get you the wine that's going to rock your world. It might be different from yours. I think and we could be best friends. I Find think the so, wine too. That's rock let's my do that. World. We'll I love make it. Make sure you bring the magnifying glass. <laughs> I do want to buy let's put the event details, by the way, up on the screen. What In my book, uh, Why You Like the Wines You Like, for Perfect. anybody that wants to geek out on this. Oh, that's cool. And then my Vinotype, like a phenotype, but Vinotype.com, there's a quiz online you Great. can take, and it'll tell you all about this. And you're there uh, at the Food and Wine week. This is the 15th anniversary going on yep. right now through June 9th. Various events and uh, Hundreds tickets of wines. starting Come at 30 me. bucks. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I, I won't do this, but I'll tell you all about yourself and, and set you off so you can say, hey, serve me. 
Get me the wine I like. I love All it, right. Tim. Thank Tim you. And I thank you so much for You're stopping so welcome. by. As thank you, always, guys. For more info about the science behind which wines you like, you can check out the Scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. And speaking of something that pairs perfectly with wine, how about some cheese? Oh, Absolutely. Sounds good to me. Houston Life correspondent Lauren Kelly has been hanging out today at Houston Dairy Maids for National Cheese Day. We saw you cut some cheese earlier today. Uh -oh. What oh, are you doing careful. now? She did. She cut some cheese. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. No such thing. I did not ever cut the cheese. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what this does. So you may have seen it on Instagram. It's called a raclette, and our cheesemonger Tim is going to show us the delicious, gooey goodness of exactly what it does. Coming up in just about one minute. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> It is National Cheese Day, and I am here at the Houston Dairy Maids with Tim Middlebrook, the cheesemonger. I didn't even know that was a word. Tell me a little bit about what a cheesemonger does. Well, a cheesemonger prepares and sells cheese, and uh, we're cooking up some raclette for you right now. This First is... of all, before you get to the raclette, I got a comment because your hat is so perfect. People oh. were commenting on the lovely hat <laughs> in celebration of National Cheese Day. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about the raclette. What does it do? Well, this is an alpine uh, cheese, and uh, this is an alpine hat. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear this all the time, but uh, yes, there's special occasions. But uh, this is a raclette melter, which uh, is also from Switzerland. But uh, it broils the top of the cheese, which gets it nice and bubbly. You want it to get it brown, but not blackened. So we've there. seen this in social media posts like I've seen it come and just be poured on top of pasta on top of bread and that's exactly what you're gonna do with this pretzel right right here um, traditionally it would be uh, over potatoes but uh, we do it oh over my gosh is your mouth watering <gasps> And there you go. That's oh, the good stuff my there. my goodness. So what else you said over potatoes? What else does this go best over? Well, uh, we have cornichons or little pickles here to go okay. with it, which uh, gets you a couple on there. Mm, mm, mm. Now, it's very hot. Otherwise, I would be taking a huge bite out of it right now. <laughs> How delicious does that look, though? Oh, I need, I need one of those machines, Tim. Can I borrow that machine from you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, raclette is very popular now. Um, awesome. It's great if you're looking for a new idea for a party. Yep. And uh, it's just great. Well, you thank you so one. much, yeah. Tim. He's the cheesemonger helping us here at Houston Dairy Maid celebrate National Cheese Day. I'm going to let that cool down, and then I'm going to devour all of it. So cheers to you guys, and celebrate National Cheese Day here with the Houston Dairy Maids. Well, thank thanks. you. I know. So awesome. We have FOMO, you guys. though. We're <laughs> drooling and starving, and we want cheese. Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> All right, still ahead on Houston Life, country legend Gary P. Nunn explains why he decided to be part of a brand new statewide campaign to help prevent automobile thefts. We'll explain right after this. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of car you drive. All vehicles are potential targets of being stolen. And Texas music legend Gary P. Nunn is on a quest to help prevent that happening to others. And he is joining us now along with Sergeant Tracy Hicks with the Houston Police Department with tips on how we can all become less vulnerable to auto theft. Guys, welcome to the show. Gary, it's great Thank to see you. you. Welcome back. Yes, yeah, great to be back. And the numbers really are kind of a big deal because Texas ranks number one when it comes to, to auto thefts. Is that right, Sergeant? Yes, it is. We're number one. Um, it's not a good number to be number one in either, <laughs> unfortunately. So you guys are, there's basically this campaign, and what are you asking for um, citizens? I mean, we seem like if, if you don't have a garage or your car's in a, in a, you know, parked in a lot, you're at the movie theater or something, because this is happening anywhere, basically. What are you asking for, for car owners to do? Well, the biggest thing that they could do easily is just is taking your keys with you and locking your car. That's, I mean, that would prevent, you know, a, a third of them at least is, uh, is just locking your car. Maybe we've gotten away from it or we think with our key fobs that no one's going to do it. But um, it, it's unfortunate people are still leaving their keys in their car. What's so interesting, and I know that seemed like a very simple question, uh, but even at parks, like let's just say Memorial Park, I have seen people leave their keys on the tire oh. and go for a run. Yeah. So, I mean, I, right? <laughs> right. 
And well, then they're surprised when they come back and their car's not there. So, I mean, this is a conversation, unfortunately, that needs right, to be happening. Well, I mean, if somebody's looking for a car, it's going to happen. The bad guys are looking to, to take it. They're mostly they're, uh, a crimes of opportunity. Mm -hmm. The people just looking for uh, somebody to uh, uh, be careless for a few moments and then turn their back and, and uh, then their car's gone. So. Uh, Gary, it's great, by the way, that you're using your position to help spread awareness. You've been a victim of auto theft in the past. I have. Well, more, it was a smash and grab, what it was. And right here in Houston, mm -hmm. uh, uh, eating uh, lunch at the Buffalo Grill at high noon on Sunday, you know, a uh, uh, guy uh, smashed my car. It was on film, but you couldn't identify the, uh, you know. And then another one in a hotel. I was in a hotel for... 30 minutes right the car was parked right in front of the front door went out you know my briefcase was, was gone and lost about three years of riding in that so that Gosh. that was you know that was a tough loss there but uh, you know we're just going around trying to spread this idea there's so many simple things that uh, people can do that would make it tougher for the bad guys to uh, exploit the situation so and it boils down to the simple slogan uh, if you like your car lock it and so that's the slogan for this campaign and and we're uh, on a statewide uh, uh, tour to, uh, around uh, such as this to uh, to promote the idea and hopefully people take note it's a very simple message and part of the way you guys are trying to spread that message is through a public service announcement we do have a clip I want to roll right now Texas, if you like it, and I love my truck, lock it. This message is a service of the Motor Vehicle Crime Prevention Authority. Oh, it's very nice. I like that music, too. I wonder where that came <laughs> from. Where did that come from? Uh, and pickup trucks, by the way, these are one of the most stolen vehicles out there, right, Sergeant? In, in Texas, yes. In Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, along the southern border, trucks are our big, are, are, are big hot ticket item. Yeah, I was on your website earlier and reading some of these statistics. It really was surprising, a lot of things. Sergeant Tracy Hicks, Gary P. Nunn, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you all would like more info about the Motor Vehicle Crime Prevention Authority, you can call 800 Car Watch. That's 800 227 9282. Or you can visit their website, txwatchyourcar.com. Some very important messages there. Gentlemen, thank you. thanks so much for coming in. Thank thanks you. for having us. We do appreciate it. All right. You want to tell the folks what's coming no, up next, Courtney? Ahead. All right. Still ahead on Houston Life, the transition from the football field to the stage for former Houston oiler Eddie George. That's right. And tomorrow on Houston Life, we're shaking up gin cocktails with a modern twist. We'll be right back. Great job, guys. Go fun. He is an NFL legend, former Houston Oiler, Heisman Trophy winner, so many things to say. Now, by the way, he's under the bright lights of the stage. He's part of the cast in Broadway's Tony Award winning Chicago. Please welcome Eddie George to Houston Live. Great to see you. Great to be here in Houston. You yes, know, this yes. is so awesome. I'm kind of pinching myself, you know? I'm like, is he, is he real? Is it's he real, real it's real, it's real. This is so cool. I mean, we went through your resume, of course, Houston. Uh -huh. We know you, we love you. Mm -hmm. And uh, how in the world did you ever make the transition from football player to Broadway yeah. performer? How it did got, that happen? You know, um, I pitch myself all the time because of it. Well, the journey started about 13 years ago um, when I stopped playing ball, well, 15. And um, I was getting uh, opportunities to audition for various roles. To say the least, they weren't going well. I had to learn how to become an actor. So I started, I started out an acting coach, started working with her relentlessly three days a week. And a part of that, a part of those lessons were singing lessons to help with my speaking voice. Never thought that I would ever uh, get on anybody's stage and sing. And in short, I started doing uh, plays in the community of Nashville, and I got uh, an opportunity to audition for the role of Billy Flynn to, to go on Broadway in 2016. 
And I guess they liked it enough to give me an opportunity. And here I am uh, doing the touring company around the country. It's a legendary show and a legendary role. Yeah, it but is. your yeah. acting skills aren't just, you know, translating on stage, but also mm -hmm. film and television. Even though it's all acting, there are pretty stark differences between we, each thing. Well, yes. I mean, it, it, it is, uh, but it isn't. I think, you know, technique-wise, you know, you're more... Um, alive and open because of theater, because you have to play to the back of the house, whereas television and film is more intimate and less is more. Uh, but uh, ultimately, it's just telling a story and telling the truth within it all. So um, that's what I've learned, and I continue to, to try to become uh, more experienced every time I hit the stage. So it's been a, a, an exciting uh, journey. We're going to talk more about your role in Chicago that's here, of mm -hmm. course, in Houston. But I, I think this is so great as, as an athlete, an accomplished athlete, that it's so important for you to stand for others, to understand that you can have a career, mm -hmm. you can have a successful career right. after being a professional athlete and that's kind of what you go out and do and you you talk to a lot of these well, athletes it's right? not, not just athletes anybody I mean it can be anybody just imagine if you stop television after so many great wonderful years what's next for you I mean it's, it's always about a transition and finding out um, your next passion your next gift your life purpose and evolving so for for athletes you know we have a, a finite end to our careers and then you have to leverage that into business um, uh, entertainment, education, whatever it is that you, you gravitate towards, you have to go with that. And I've attacked each one of them um, you know, from the bottom up. I went back on my MBA, and then I started off in acting classes, and then you know I got my Series 7 and so forth for, for my businesses. So I've always started off at the very bottom to understand the business. So once I got into it fully, there's nothing that uh, I haven't seen or done or can't uh, take on in terms of experience-wise. It is pretty incredible to look at the breadth of experiences you've had mm -hmm. over the course of your career. Is there anything that's left on your career bucket list <sighs> that you still want to do? A couple things. Uh, one, I want to want to win a green jacket from the Masters. Oh, oh. that ain't gonna happen. Uh, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. Anybody have a green time. jacket? Anybody have a green jacket? <laughs> yeah, I can get one made. It have a, it have a sense, right? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but that's not gonna happen. Um, but the overall, uh, no, I, I just continue to try to, to seek excellence in all that I'm doing now, and try to build a long-lasting career for you know for, that can last me the rest of my life. It's so yeah. great to have you here. Hopefully you guys um, can come out to the show. I, well, talk to us about Chicago for people mm -hmm. that don't know. It's it's happening right in our backyard, yes. and this is one of my favorite productions. Yeah, what's your favorite number, by the way? Oh, Cell I have block to tango. Pick, Yeah, Cell that block one's good. That one is it good. Is, it is, it's one of mine, too. I mean, I, I hear it. I go on, the, uh, on later on in the show, but I hear it every time. That comes on. It's time for me to get my my uh, my juices going. But no, it's I play the role of Billy Flynn, uh, the famous lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, he kind of drives the show, the ship of the show. He's helping Roxy Hart uh, get off trial, get off her um, or her case, and try to twist and since since since. Since this, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try to embellish the story to get her uh, off of her case. And um, uh, I, I have three different songs. It's been an amazing run with the great dancers, great actresses, great actors, and uh, it's been awesome. It's so much fun even just seeing those still photos. By right. the way, Eddie, I hope you're going to take a nap this afternoon because you've got a big show yeah. starting tonight through Sunday. There's the info on your screen. Tickets start at only 35 bucks. And by the way, if you use the promo code HOU, life you can get 25% off it is a fantastic 25% off deal. that's a good deal yeah. and thanks so much for coming thanks by. for coming through pleasure yes. to meet you thanks yes. so much nice for seeing you we'll man. see you next time absolutely you didn't thank say you. you know host a tv show on that bucket list maybe you can come i back. mean you're welcome <laughs> <to come back. laughs> i love that. that yes <laughs> well next on houston life are you prepared for hurricane season what you need to know when it comes to the insurance policies we'll be right back seriously are you going to take a nap tonight L?
Welcome back. Hurricane season is officially here, and if your home is not protected with the right coverage, you might be in for some pretty massive headaches. Well, here to help us prepare for hurricane season, also understand the insurance coverage, is Chris Draper with Allstate. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's first talk about what everybody needs to know during hurricane season, is once a system enters the Gulf, you, there are no changes to be made, and you cannot add any get the insurance or add anything to your policy. Right, so the official start of hurricane season was actually June 1st. Right. So we're in preparation mode now, and what you want to do immediately is check and make sure that you have the right coverage to protect your property, whether that's your home or your vehicles. You want to look and make sure that you have coverage for certain things like wind damage from a hurricane or flooding from rising water. That's very important. And again, that's something you have to do now. You can't wait until it's too late. Exactly. And a lot of people find out when it is too late that their coverage maybe is not what they thought. Some people who were displaced during Harvey uh, may have had the question, will insurance cover the cost of your displacement? Well, of course, because Harvey, as you know, a couple years ago was a very devastating event. And what FEMA studies showed is about 80% of people that were displaced or in Harvey or had some sort of damage did not have proper flood insurance in place to cover those losses. So yeah, that's, that's probably the most important policy that you can have and it's one of the least expensive policies that you can buy uh, for your insurance coverage protection. And we always talk about homeowners insurance. So let's talk about that when your home, it, if it happens, God forbid, if a home gets flooded, is that the homeowners insurance policy that you then go through? So generally most home insurance policies do not cover flood damage so rising water would be excluded from the policy and so what you want to do is you want to get a separate policy from the national flood insurance program and you can go to floodsmart.gov or you can check with your local insurance representative they'll be able to help you with that policy and get that in place now what you want to do again prepare do it before the hurricane gets in the gulf because there's a 30-day mandatory waiting period that's required so you want to get that in place before we have any issues or rising water. And you also want to ask those questions. Call your adjuster, figure it out and say, am I covered? Ask these simple, same questions what we're asking you. Yeah, you want to make sure that you have that coverage in place. Check with your insurance agency. A, a, a licensed agent can walk you through uh, what's covered, what are some of the things to expect, uh, as well as some additional coverages that you may not know are available after the storm hits, after you file a claim, if you are displaced from your house, like additional living expenses or what's called loss of use coverage. Separate flood insurance, by the way, is generally a whole lot cheaper than homeowners insurance, mm -hmm. right? Well, it depends. depends. So that a lot of people think it is very expensive, but most of the uh, viewers here in the area are in a preferred flood zone X, and that policy is only a few hundred dollars a year. It starts about two, three hundred dollars a year, and the most it could cost is four hundred fifty dollars a year. Again, if you're in a preferred zone. Now, if you're in a standard flood zone, so an area that's more prone to flooding, and we saw a lot of that. Obviously, there in Harvey, there's certain areas you know when the water starts to rise that it's going to flood. Those standard flood zones are going to cost a little bit more oh. than $450, but it all depends on how high your house sits in relation to the rest of the community. Okay. So again, definitely check with floodsmart.gov or your local licensed insurance professional and they'll be able to walk you through that. Let's talk about uh, flood damage to our vehicles because that's an issue obviously if we're driving or trying to get home or somewhere and we're out and we get caught in sort of that high rising water. What happens then? Yes, if you don't listen and heed the advice of <laughs> turn, turn around, around don't, don't drown. drown then there's a very good chance that if you're driving around in floodwaters, your vehicle is going to become immobilized. Now, uh, if you have comprehensive coverage, coverage on your policy, and that's insurance coverage that protects from uh, weather-related events like a tree falling on your car or rising water, flood insurance damage, then you're going to be okay. But remember, while your vehicle is being repaired, you're also going to need something to drive. So also make sure that you have that rental car protection on your policy as well. And that coverage will pay for you to, to rent a vehicle while yours is in the shop. So And Chris, very quickly, we're just about yeah. out of time. Let's say there is a hurricane forming down in the Gulf. What things should we be doing to prepare ourselves in the days before the storm actually hits us? Days before the storm hits, you want to make sure that you have a plan in place for your family. You want to make sure that everyone knows where they're going to be if the storm hits as well as have some supplies on hand. You want to have a gallon of water per day per person for three days. You want to have food, certainly gas your vehicles up. Gas was very hard to get yeah. after the recent hurricanes and so you want to make sure that you have all these things, even a weather radio so you can keep track of what's going on and then certainly again make sure your pets are taken care of and everyone knows what's going on, has a plan in place and please, please, please 
make sure that you have the right insurance protection coverage on your policy. Do the homework now. Chris, very important conversation. Thanks so much yes. for stopping Thank by. We've got to have you back to continue it. Certainly. By the way, Allstate does post hurricane preparedness tips regularly on their Twitter page. You can call, follow them by searching for Allstate TX. And for more information on Allstate, you can give them a call at 1-800-255-7283 or visit them online at allstate.com. Thanks so much. We'll be right back with a look at what's happening for tomorrow. Yeah. A reminder, today is your very last day to enter to win four tickets to see the Houston Ballet's brand new show, The Merry Widow. The show runs now through Sunday at the Wortham's Theater Center, and you can purchase tickets at HoustonBallet.org. But as Derek mentioned, we have four tickets to give away. Just visit our website, click the Merry Widow article, and enter your information for a chance to win. The winner will be announced on the show tomorrow. And in the meantime, uh, I'm so glad about our wine education. I know. A salt and lemon wedge. Mm. Always good. See you tomorrow. Bye.